So we are going to talk a little bit about the effect of substrate concentration on the initial rate of reaction in an enzyme catalyzed reaction. In the previous video, I did tell you that the initial rate of reaction is referred to as the steepest rate of reaction that will happen in an experiment. Okay, it's the steepest part of the chemical reaction. In this case here, we will be conducting four different experiments simultaneously. In the first box, you can see that there are three enzymes and some concentration of substrates, a low concentration of substrates. Uh, in the second box, it has the same concentration of enzymes, but slightly more substrates. Third box, same concentration of enzymes, even more substrates. And in the fourth box, it has the same concentration of enzymes, but uh, the highest concentration of substrates. I like to ask my students this question, which experiment uh, will yield the highest amount of products? So if we were to look at the graph of products over time, experiment A will go up in a purple line and then it will stop because there is no more ES complex formation. Uh, experiment B, it will increase even higher and produces more products. The reason why it produces more products is because it has more substrates in the beginning. Experiment C will yield even more products, logically, and experiment D will give us the highest concentration of products because it actually had the highest concentration of substrates. Now, Remember, if you wanted to compare the rate of reaction for all these four experiments, I told you before that comparing their initial rate of reaction is a fair comparison. So if we wanted to compare the initial rate of reaction, okay, it's the steepest part of the curve. Again, if we were to take the first experiment here, experiment A, you see, in the first second of the experiment, what exactly happened was only one ES complex was formed because there was a low concentration of substrates. So what is the initial rate of reaction over here? The initial rate of reaction is one product per second because it only, within one second, it only produced one product. So this is fine. In experiment B, when we added more substrates, what will happen is, because you have more substrates, they can form more ES complex at the very beginning. So in this case, theoretically, within one second, two products were formed as represented by the green uh, circles. And the initial rate of reaction is as such, two products per second. In experiment C, however, we add even more substrates. And when we add even more substrates, what will happen to the form chances of forming the ES complex? You are right. There will be an even higher chance of forming the ES complex. So in this case, three enzymes met up with the substrates and therefore it forms three ES complex as I'm showing you over there, as I've highlighted. And in this case, it forms three products within one second. So this is the initial rate of reaction for experiment C. Now, so moral of the story here is, as you increase the concentration of substrates, there will be more collisions between the enzyme and substrate, and therefore there's more ES complex formation, and there is a faster product formation, which means there will be a higher initial rate of reaction, as we can see in the graph. But in experiment D, however, I want you to see there is an extremely high concentration of substrates, what will happen is the initial rate of reaction is still three products per second. Now, how is that possible? I told you that the more substrates you give to the enzyme, the higher the initial rate of reaction. But why is this initial rate of reaction still the same as the previous experiment, which is also three products per second? The reason is because there is a limited concentration of enzymes. So the initial rate of reaction for enzyme for experiment D is also three products per second as well due to the limited concentration of enzymes. No matter how many substrates you have, 
the enzymes in this diagram there are on, there are only three enzymes so at any one given moment only three substrates can bind to the enzymes no more that is the problem with it so the initial rate of reaction will always be three products per second as well so the rate of the initial rate of reaction cannot increase no matter how hard you try unless you were to increase the concentration of enzymes. If you're still not sure about this, let's do this again. Now, we have the four experiments as follows. In experiment 1, 2, 3, and 4, all of them have the same concentration of enzymes, but they all have increasing concentration of substrates, as I've represented in the orange triangles. So within one second, theoretically, in the first experiment, only one ES complex was formed, so the initial rate of reaction was one product per second. In the second experiment, two ES complexes were formed and therefore it forms two products per second initially. That is the initial rate of reaction. In the third experiment, due to the higher concentration of substrates, it was able to form three ES complexes immediately and therefore the initial rate of reaction is three products per second. And in the fourth experiment, yes, it has more substrates, yet it cannot become four products per second. It is still three products per second because look at the way I've highlighted that diagram. Only three enzymes are occupied at any one time. So the initial rate of reaction is also three products per second. So if I were to plot a graph of initial rate of reaction over substrate concentration for experiment one, it has one product per second. Experiment two, two products per second. Experiment three, three products per second. And experiment four, even though it has a higher concentration of substrates, it is also three products per second. And when you draw this graph here, it will increase until it reaches a certain point and then it begins to level off. This value, when it levels off, is referred to as something called as the Vmax value. When you increase the substrate concentration, initially, the rate of reaction will also increase. And in this case, the reason why it increases is because there, is, there are more collisions between the enzyme and substrate. But after a certain point, the collision between the enzyme and substrate remains constant due to the limited number of enzymes. A very important point I want you to know is, I want you to note these two graphs over here. The graph on the left is uh, the amount of product against time, and the graph on the right is the initial rate of reaction against substrate concentration. The pattern of the two graphs look quite similar, so a lot of times students get very confused with these graphs. They think it's the same. No, the graph on the left is just to show you the effect of the progress of the reaction of one experiment. And why does it level off? It levels off because there are no more products formed over a period of time. The reason is because there are no more substrates to bind to the enzyme. The graph on the right, however, is not based on just one experiment. It was based on multiple experiments where they increased the concentration of substrates and they then calculated the initial rate of reaction. The reason why that graph levels off is not because the reaction is no longer happening, but the initial rate of reaction is happening at a constant rate due to the limited concentration of enzymes. Please be aware of these graphs.